Portuguese property has been well looked after. The houses are intact and government building seems unmarked by the fighting. While their flag still flies, the Portuguese themselves look out on the scene from the neighbouring island of Atauro. Fretilin provides them with food and even sent over 15,000 cans of beer at the request of the 50 Portuguese troops who are still there. <laughs> The docks are heavily guarded by an assortment of the latest army recruits, somehow the least military of soldiers. And it's here that the most treasured weapon of war lies. A bullet-riddled Alouette helicopter. But there's no one to fly it, and an Australian mercenary willing to do the job is said to have had his passport impounded by Australian authorities. UDT did better with the Australians. Two Australian pilots flew over Dili in the early days of the coup and threw hand grenades from the windows of their light aircraft. Once out of the capital, it becomes quite plain that 500 years of Portuguese rule has done little for the colony. Four kilometres from government building, the roads peter out and at best they become dried up mountain streams. To get to the border is a gruelling two-day journey in four-wheel drive vehicles. The road to the border is littered with trucks and farm vehicles abandoned by the UDT in their flight westward. As we approached each village, the arrival of Fretilin was heralded by the blaring of car horns. And although the welcomes were far from spontaneous, they seemed relatively sincere. The song they sing is the Fretilin hymn Foho Ramalau, Mount Ramalau, the highest peak in the colony and the highest in the Portuguese empire. Hey Mount Ramalau, it goes, what is higher than you? Why have the Timorese people always bowed their heads? Welcome, the top of the mountain is light. Welcome, a new day is dawning. The closer one gets to the border, the more one sees of the Maubari, the ordinary people. Hill tribesmen armed with spears and bows and arrows. In the cold light of day, they seem ineffectual, even comical. But at night, they come into their own. They're deadly accurate with their archaic weapons, and the Burman have developed a technique of loosing off three arrows at a time in a burst approaching the rapidity of machine guns. On the outskirts of the village of Atabai, a 12-year-old boy stood guard. His name is Pele. He'd arrived there with 200 rounds of ammunition and an automatic rifle. Under the rules of Fretilin's army, they were his, and he was a soldier. <laughs> In the village itself, children at the only school in the entire colony which is still operating go through physical training. It's part of a general toughening up program which the revolutionary forces hope to introduce into a country where 50% of all children die before they reach the age of five. Then the older boys, 12-year-olds, demonstrated their skill with automatic rifles. 